I'm Benjamin Vincent from the University of North Carolina Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. My, my team is uh, one of the co-developers of the CRI Atlas. I think cancer vaccines are really exciting and we saw some uh, great data from both peptide vaccines and mRNA based vaccines, which are the two main vaccine formulations that are in trials now. Uh, in terms of peptide vaccines, we learned more about the requirement for both the CD8 and the CD4 T cells to be involved in the tumor rejection process. And we saw in the mRNA vaccine world, we learned that uh, BioNTech is making therapeutics from sequencing data in less than three days, which is amazing speed. And I think they're leveraging all that they've learned in building the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine uh, and putting it to good use uh, in cancer vaccines as well. We also learned that there's some success uh, in one of Dr. Balachandran's trials in the adjuvant setting in pancreatic cancer. So giving the tumor vaccine once the cancer is removed surgically and finding that patients who responded immunologically to the vaccine by eliciting tumor antigen specific T cells do better clinically. So I think the reason that's exciting is that most vaccines have been tested in the advanced and metastatic setting, so where the tumor cannot be surgically removed uh, and it's a much harder treatment context. But now we're learning a lot of the relevant immunology in the adjuvant context and you know, perhaps patients are actually benefiting as well. And I think we can translate some of that knowledge to the more difficult metastatic context in the future. So I think there were two outstanding, really outstanding talks, maybe my two favorite talks of the, the whole meeting were in that session. Uh, one from Hayden Kissick uh, using spatial technologies and omics as part of a story to resolve which T cell populations are maintained over time and sustain an anti-tumor response versus which populations are actually in the tumor affecting that anti-tumor response. And I think that is going to be very, very important for us as we try to design therapeutic strategies, understanding that we might have to target the tumor and the lymph node and the peripherally separately and think about them as separate compartments, separate but interacting compartments. It was very exciting. And then, and then Ron Germain's talk, looking at not just two-dimensional, but three-dimensional imaging really blew me away. The fact that they could took, take entire lymph nodes or entire tumor specimens and resolve 30 or more protein markers in three-dimensional resolution uh, and then developed bioinformatics capacity to analyze co-localization of cells uh, within pieces of the tumor and lymph node and try to understand what that means. Uh, that technology is really amazing and I think we're going to be hearing a lot more uh, insights from that going forward. I think one of the real challenges in doing this kind of work is having people in your team who are computational biologists, uh, bioinformaticians, sometimes software engineers, uh, who can actually deal with all of the data coming from these new technologies. And I think one of the things that we're trying to do with the iAtlas project is to make that kind of informatics processing available much more widely. Um, we're, you know, classically in genomics now with DNA and RNA sequencing this year. We're building in support for single cell omics and spatial technologies. Uh, but the goal there is to have at least some modules where people can go to iAtlas, find some harmonized data, or learn how to work with their own data in that context, and then derive insights from it without having to have an in-house bioinformatics team themselves. So I think the conference was very exciting. I've never been before, didn't quite know what to expect, but I'll definitely be coming back. I think the caliber of the science was outstandingly high and the uh, people were fr freely interacting and encouraging collaborations and so on. So it's been a wonderful meeting, I, I think, for me. I think other than the talks today that I've already mentioned, uh, a major thing I learned was from the actual introductory keynote speech by Crystal Makel, talking where, where she used a multi-omics approach as well as cellular immunology approach to dissect the presence of regulatory T cells in CAR T products. And I think that's going to be incredibly important going forward as now products are manufactured somewhat non-specifically 
and then given to the patients. But I think there's huge heterogeneity in these cell therapy products, whether the, the commercial products or the individual institutional developmental products. And I think we can gain a lot of insight and we need to learn how to enrich those products for the T cells that will be most beneficial when we give them to the patients, as well as deplete those products from the T cell populations that might actually impair anti-tumor response. And I think her work that she showed is a sort of a beautiful step in, in that direction and it's exciting to see.